And then in first grade, my parents actually let me take an old TV apart. I didn't, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just rooting through it, smashing stuff, breaking apart the old capacitors, seeing what was in it. And there, there were a couple of different things. In, in elementary school, there was a full science program that they had after school, and I was part of that. And I saw... Matt, welcome back up. Sorry about that. There. No, you're done. <laughs> and I saw a little induction coil. And it was used for testing me on signs and it had that little arc, and I just fell in love with that. And that stuck with me for years and years. And Tesla was, it kept being brought up every so often. I just, I'd see something about Tesla or something about a Tesla coil. And eventually I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna build one. So I got on the internet and I started looking up stuff, and this was actually about two and a half years ago, two, three years ago. And I saw a little plans for just a desktop model induction coil, and you would take a ignition coil out of a car. So I built that and I modified it a little bit. I had a couple hundred watts into it, and I was getting like three inch arcs. And I found a bread tube for making bread. It was a big, like four and a half inch diameter glass tube, about 20 inches long or so. And I machined up some acrylic end caps because I have machining experience with Blackpoint Engineering, Steve's company and he's been a great mentor to me. And so I machined those up, got an old Harbor Freight vacuum pump, and it was a terrible setup, but I was actually making plasma in my bedroom, and my parents were all freaked out and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but that was fun, and then my, I told my physics teacher, and he said, oh, you gotta be careful of radiation. And then I talked to John, and he's just like, nah, that's probably actually good for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> but last November, I just said, you know what, I'm gonna build a big one. So I built one, I had, it was a two coil system, this is a three coil system, and I had just the primary coil, and I was using that as a secondary coil, something similar to that. And I had the dryer tubing all made into the big toroid up top. And I actually had the same amount of power input, this is about 1100 watts. And I go and I throw the switch, and not much happens at all. So I was devastated at that point, but I found out that my microwave capacitors were not rated for 250 kilohertz. And because I went into it having no electrical experience whatsoever, I didn't know what I was doing at all. So I quickly learned that you have to use components that are rated for what you're doing. And I, from something called the Tesla coil mailing list, I, got on that and also other coilers have recommended to use these capacitors. They're Cornell delivery capacitors and they work great. And over, just since last November, it's escalated to the point where I tried the three coil system. Originally I had some sort of primary coil that looked sort of like that. It was made out of quarter inch refrigerator tubing. And Steve and I at one point made a pancake coil, a bifiler pancake coil about that big. And so I wired the windings in parallel and grounded out one end to use as my secondary coil. And then I had just another coil laying around to use as a tertiary for the magnifier setup. And that worked quite a bit better than the two coil system did. So then I said, you know what, I'm just gonna build a nice one. So I built a secondary coil somewhat like this. I had that tertiary and I've been just tweaking it for months and months until I talked to Rick he said, why don't you build one for the conference? So I did build one for the conference, and I'm going to run it for you guys. Would you like that? Yeah! A little bit more enthusiasm. Yeah. Oh, good job. Nice to see you. Great. Yeah. It's great to see that. Oh! Oh, oh. Put me a knife on my camera.